Capitol Hill, Representative Robert Goodlatte, Republican of Virginia. Uh, Congressman Goodlatte, good to have you on. Uh, I, I want to be be I want to begin with the fact that you, you were one of the, the drivers behind the House legislation that the Senate did reject uh, this morning. Are you, sir, uh, are you satisfied that you've had your say here and now it's down to the talks between uh, the, the House Speaker and the President? Well, I think what's really important here is that the Senate in rejecting what the House did, now has an obligation to work in a bipartisan fashion if they reject the, the plan the House sent, which raises the debt limit as the President requested, but it also cuts spending, caps spending, and leads to a balanced budget, in fact, a balanced budget amendment that I introduced on the first day of this Congress. The Senate has an obligation to produce something that the House can then negotiate with the Senate on. I'm pleased that they're still having discussions at the White House, but those discussions have never resulted in anything hmm that either the House or the Senate could vote on, and the President has never put anything in writing that we could score, that we could uh, have the green eye shades people in the Congressional Budget Office say, this is how much it would cost, this is how much it would save, this is the tax proposal, whatever the proposal might be, yeah. if the President wants us to vote on it, he's got to give us something in writing. Well, speaking of the, the talks, as they are just talks right now, as you point out, between the President, between Speaker Boehner, do you, do you foresee repercussions among Republicans? Uh, against Speaker Boehner, should, should he cut a deal with the White House to keep the government from defaulting come uh, August 2nd? No, I think that the Speaker is fully aware that unlike the President, who is the only uh, elected official in the executive branch can, that can act unilaterally and can make a proposal on his own, whatever the Speaker discusses with the President, he's got to bring back to the House, particularly to the Republican conference, and he'll then get a very clear idea whether that's something that would pass or not. So we have a lot of confidence in Speaker Boehner, in Majority Leader Cantor, in the negotiations that they've conducted. I think they've represented our position well, but uh, you can't judge a package until it's actually produced and brought back to the Congress. And again, with the clock ticking down, it's yeah. urgent that the Senate or the President put something forward. We, we've already voted to raise the debt limit uh, subject to what we think the American people want, and that is cutting government spending and balancing our budget. Well, I don't know if you listened to, to the president today. I was sitting there taking notes because he really tried to, to make it palatable to the Americans uh, so, so that we understand these complicated debt talks, right, that everyone's having day in and day out. And, and the president today said that, that your refusal to, to lift the debt ceiling, to pay the government's bills is like, what did he say? He says, the U.S. doesn't run out without paying the tab. We pay our bills. We don't run out on the tab. You know, that, that is pretty simple sure. language. Do you, do you disagree with that? Well, of course I do, because the House has already voted to raise the debt ceiling. We've sent that bill to the Senate. The Senate rejected it this morning by a narrow vote. And we certainly understand the Senate doesn't have to agree with the House. But if they don't agree with the House, they have to produce something else uh, that we can deal with. And the President asked for a clean lift of the debt ceiling. That has two problems. One, we voted on it in the House, and it was overwhelmingly defeated. Not only all the Republicans, but almost half the Democrats voted against that. But the other problem is that the bond rating agencies, Moody's, Standard & Poor's, they've made it clear that not only can we not default, and no one here thinks that we can default on our obligations, but not only can we not default, but we also have to put this government on a track to reducing spending, yeah, or yeah, they'll I was talking our to Mark, rating for that. I was talking to Mark Zanny just the other day from Moody's, and uh, at the time he seemed pretty optimistic, uh, but I think everyone agrees that we can't afford to default whatsoever. But I do I do want to show you a poll, sir. Uh, we have this poll. It shows the, the number is 34. 34 percent of Americans now agree with uh, your position not to raise anyone's taxes to help pay down the debt. So, so if the government defaults, if the government defaults, if the economy then uh, obviously go, would go south, will you get the blame, uh, Congressman Goodlatte, or do you assume, assume that folks will, will say that it must be the president's fault? I suspect that different people will place blame in different places, but we don't want to default. We don't want to get blame. We want to get credit for doing our jobs. And in fact, uh, if the president has a tax proposal, put that on the table. Many have said uh, in the House uh, that if the taxes are net neutral, in other words, if the uh, tax increases are offset with uh, tax cuts that help the middle class, for example, dealing with the alternative minimum tax, that that would be something that we would also consider, but we can't consider anything unless somebody puts it across the table, either the president or the Senate. We're ready to act on whatever they send. We're ready to negotiate with the Senate if they send something back in response to what we sent them. 
but they haven't done that and uh, uh, I think that's unfortunate because we have you know 10 days or so left uh, to get this done we before do August indeed. 2nd. We do 11 days and as you mentioned the, the talk is happening but you want to see it in writing and the American people want to know uh, what's in the details as well. Uh, Congressman Robert Goodlatte of Virginia thank you so much for coming on. Thank you Brooke. And I uh, want to go back to our breaking story out of Norway not going to go too far from that.